good afternoon to you viewers how are you doing all right again this is the church of a nazarene baba this district family forum and we are so glad to share with you again in today's program if you were with us last sunday we were looking at family legacy and uh, the whole anatomy of what it is all about and today we're going to continue that discussion and dialogue and um along with my co-host Raman kelman how very are you blessed, very blessed um uh, for everyone, I'm doing okay. Hello, Farley, and I trust that our uh, bridge are doing okay as well. I trust that you had a good day and that uh, you were able to attend a church of your, of your own desire. And uh, I give God thanks and praise, and, and I'm looking forward to our very rich discussion this afternoon uh, with, um, with Robert, Robert Martelli. Right, Robert Martelli, thanks again for coming. Thank you for having me. And sharing with us. I know I kind of um, had to wake up early to come and share, <laughs> but we appreciate your presence. <laughs> All right, and as I've said before, let me give you a little, um, I would say a nugget um, about Grant Lee. Reverend Grant Lee Martelli, um, he is the associate pastor of Hillside Church in Kent. And he served previously on the Intermountain District Advisory Board and the Nazarene, Northwest Nazarene University Alumni Board. He's also served as on the board of the Mission Aviation Fellowship and uh, as a bivocational minister, uh, Reverend Martelli is also the Chief Operating Officer for Pierce Transit a public transportation agency in Washington. Of course, I know, I know he enjoys this area of um, ministry, the podcast. He's responsible for, founder and host of the Above the Noise Faith, Race and Reconciliation podcast. And he is a married man of 35 years. And we really appreciate the sacrifice you have made to share with us today. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. All right. Well, before we move on to this, get put a teeth into the session, I just want to leave a verse with you. As I said to you, we are zeroing in on um, legacy as it relates to family. And uh, here's a verse from Psalm 103, verse 17, that says, From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children and that is so critical his righteousness with their children's children significant indeed mm -hmm. all right Reverend Calvin I'll open the prayer for us <laughs> so, Almighty God we are so delighted for the gift of family and we pray, God, even now that as you would engage this discussion, that you would give to us, Lord, the various nuggets of truth that we need to make our families function more effectively and to leave, Lord, good legacies. Bless and prosper this discussion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Viewers, back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. All right, back with you. Again, I trust we still have some time, so if you want to invite a family member, to share with us, we'd be so glad um, because the information we are sharing here is so important as we, as I said, focus on the area of legacy as it relates to the family. And I know in the last program we would have zeroed in on the family in general, but we want to start this session, I'm sure, uh, by highlighting the youth, youth role. I know sometimes we think of your legacy and we may think more of the older persons in the family that's critical as well but we want to start this discussion 
as we zero in on the youth um, in our family. Where, 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 where are they? Are they on the margin? Or are they a part and parcel of legacy? And therefore, I'm going to hand over to Reverend Martelli, and then we'll come back and have some dialogue. Thank you. It's good to be here again in this show with you. We're having a good conversation. Um, last time, if you remember, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen the previous episode, we talked about Timothy and Paul uh, based on, on, on Second Timothy. And we, say, we talked about five points. Five, first point being that Tim, Paul reminded Timothy that he had a place to belong. He had a place he could come to. Mm -hmm. He had people who cared about him. He had places a person who he know he could speak to. And many of our young people today need to know that they have a place they can come, a place to belong. Right. The second thing we learned that Paul reminded him was that you had a godly heritage. You had a grandmother and a mother who spoke into you and helped you to become foundational in the things that you are, that now you're about to propel into life. That foundation is gonna carry you as you have this community to support you. The third thing is that you have a purpose in life. That's right. So their job was helping him to fan into flame. And all that means is to help pull out of him the things that are in him and, and remind him to be bold and to be courageous because it's in you, you just got to let it come out and mm -hmm. God will guide you and lead you and we will stand behind you. The fourth thing we talked about was because there was a reputation to protect. So protect what you have learned, protect what has been entrusted to you and then entrust it to other people. Mm -hmm. Share what you have, pay it forward, teach other people the things you know, just like your grandmother taught you, your mother taught you, and we have taught you. Mm -hmm. And then the fifth one is that you were uniquely created to be you, Amen. based on Psalm 139, verse 14 mm -hmm. to 16. So as we look at it now, or going into the youth, mm -hmm. you, you take that point and you say, each was created uniquely yes. to be what you, God created you to be, and there's certain things in life that will not be accomplished unless you do it. Right. It doesn't mean that God can't do it without you, but <laughs> it means that He wants you to have the experience to know what He can do through you, Amen. right? Mm -hmm. So uniquely created. So if you look at that verse in, in where Paul was saying to Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example in speech, conduct, love, and purity, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times we say, but set an example and we put a period there, but you got to read the whole verse. <laughs> Set an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faithfulness and purity. And those are foundational to legacy, yes. right? How we right. speak, how we conduct ourselves, mm -hmm. how we love people or not, are we faithful in the things that we say we're going to do? Not just in our marriage relationships, not all about marriage that he was talking about here because Timothy was still young, but faithfulness in the things you say you're going to do. Can mm -hmm. people trust your word? Are you going to show up when you're supposed to show up? Mm -hmm. are, you know, mm -hmm. are you going to do the best you can do? Not do it perfectly. And then purity, right? Try, try to abstain from things that are going to pull you down and, and, and cause you to be unhealthy or negative. And God doesn't want us to be pure because he wants to steal our joy. God wants us to strive for purity because he knows it benefits us. Yeah. And many of your, your older parents and grandparents will tell you about things they did in their youth that they wish they could go back and undo because they're living <laughs> the consequences today, right? Yeah. At that time, they thought their parents were holding them back but now they got to deal with whatever it is, you know, and, and so a few points I, wanna, I want us to look at here. The reality of today is the reality of today. This is where we live. Mm -hmm. It's okay to look back and say yesterday, and it's okay to look back, we would like it like it was before, but the fact is those things help propel us, but we can't go back to yesterday. So what can we do today that is relevant for today to propel us forward? Mm -hmm. um, we talk about the, the young people do not look down upon them because you're young. If we think about that verse, he was talking about people in church as well as people in community. And many times as a youth, you know, people, uh, people say don't let people look down on you because you're young. And we look at that look down on you. I, first of all, he was talking about people in church, but there was also the community. But when we say look down on you, I don't believe that sometimes when people are down on us is because they're intentional in doing us harm. Mm -hmm. They may just not understand where you're going, the mm -hmm. things that you're talking about, mm -hmm. the dream that you have. Mm -hmm. You know, you look around us today and there's so much technology. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that young people are talking about, you know, even we that are just one generation behind them don't understand. Yeah. So you think about the grandparents and other people, mm -hmm. it's like 
we don't have a clue what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Our children are, are exposed to so much information. It, to me, uh, this, I don't know if this is scientifically proven or not, but it seems to me <laughs> that our children are exposed to there in one day more information than most of us were exposed to in our entire life growing up. <laughs> now, whether they use it or not is another thing, but they have it in the internet, they have it in Instagram, they have it in all of these things, YouTube. You ever been on YouTube and just do a search for a word? and see how much videos come up, That's you true. know. That's true. You want to learn how to fix a window. You don't even have to go to the library anymore. Just mm -hmm. go on YouTube and you have a window to do it. Mm -hmm. Some of our grandparents don't even understand what YouTube is. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're looking down on us in a negative way. It's just, I don't understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how this even pertains to me. Yeah. So engage, I allow them to engage with technology and be willing to learn from young people about things that are happening, partner with them in a way that you can learn. You know, if you don't know how to use your cell phone, ask your grandchild, and they'll be happy to teach you how to use it. <laughs> but don't put down the cell phone because we don't have another phone like it used to be, and you guys are always on your cell phone and all that kind of stuff. The second thing is try to create a judgment-free environment, a place where young people can come and have open discussion, ask questions, learn something, you know. When we were growing up, there were a lot of things that were not apropos to even talk about. Mm -hmm. Today our young people want to talk about them. Everything. They want to talk about everything <laughs> because they're running into it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, in our day, we had to go to the library to find out certain things. It, in, our, in, in our day, these young people just type it in and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, what does that mean, mom? Oh, okay, let me go and do some research. Mm -hmm. And also, don't be afraid to say, hey, I don't know, I need to go and to learn about what you're talking about. And then the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, better understand the community in which we live in. It's different. It's different. It's not different, it's not bad or good. It's just it's different. different. Mm -hmm. Things happen differently, things think differently, the kids are being taught differently in school, they want to dress differently, they want to listen to different music. Mm -hmm. But I believe that at the heart of it, young people still want to be part of a family still want to be part of a core group, they still want to feel wanted, they want to have their questions answered, and they want us to be authentic with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say is open up your home as a place where young people can hang out. And, you know, and come and hang out and just sit around, you know, feed them some Marby or some lemonade or whatever, <laughs> you know, because what happens in a home, I don't know if you notice this, in a church, is when you invite people into your home, there is an additional level of relaxation, an additional level of sharing, an additional level of community that happens. Mm -hmm. That's why in the Bible, whenever there was a covenant or there was a treaty or something to be thing, the people gathered in a circle, in a home or in a place, they shared a meal, they washed hands together, washed feet together, and you know, they broke meal, mm -hmm. and then they used the salt to seal it. Mm -hmm. But it was always within that context of, of a community, community, community of where it is. They didn't go and sit down in a conference room and just sign it and leave. Mm -hmm. You had to have tea first, you had to have dinner first, you had to talk about everything first. And that they sort of created that place where people can ask questions. The Bible talks about in Psalm 1, 3, being planted by a river of water that brings forth fruit in the season. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can bring forth fruit is if we're planted, we understand the soil we're in, we understand the nurture of the soil, how we're gonna grow, and that there's a, there's a season for that fruit. And it may not be the season that we think it is, but the season may be that God wants it to be. Mm -hmm. right. So one of the things we talked about earlier off, we were getting into is the community and this tension in a family that could uh, arise because people are on the same page. And I think that we see this here in, in Timothy, that Paul was saying, everybody's not always on, uh, is, is not on the same page, Timothy. Mm -hmm. So part of your job <laughs> as this young man coming into this place where some of the people are old enough to be your grandmother or your mother, mm -hmm. they probably knew them, your job is to help get them on the same page, mm -hmm. at least to the point that they can move that church, that community forward mm -hmm. in understanding. It doesn't mean that everybody has to agree, but you create a level of understanding that we can move forward together, mm -hmm. talk together, mm -hmm. even have arguments together. Argument's not always bad. Sometimes you need to have an argument because somebody has something to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Let them say what they have to say, 
and then go from there. Mm -hmm. Because if we tell them they can't say, you know what happens, resentment, yeah. pain, mm -hmm. the anger they come into the room, now they leave with a separate anger, you wouldn't mm -hmm. talk to me, you wouldn't let me say whatever, mm -hmm. and the opportunity we had to solve a problem now becomes it's worse. Because yeah. the next time they come, they come with more anger. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're going to say anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't say it to you, they're going to say it to somebody, yeah, that's right, that's right. right? And I think that's what Paul was telling Timothy, right? Create that place, because they had dissension, they had a disunity, they had false doctrine. He's saying, create a space where for people dialogue, can come for dialogue. and dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, baby, I believe you were listening intently, as we were. <laughs> And um, the, the information shared is so relevant when it comes to legacy in the family. And, and uh, you see the importance of the youth blending with the older ones. That's what the word, that's what, that's how we learn, you know. It is not a case where we are supposed to be segregated or segmented, mm -hmm. part and parcel of the family. And this, this is replicated in the church. Yeah. The concepts here that we talk about that should be in the home, but became in the church as well. Mm -hmm. Because you have church family, you have your blood family, church family. Some of the commonalities are very, very real. Anyhow, um, viewers, back with you in a moment. We can dig a little deeper. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, welcome back to you. And um, we're having a, a quite, quite a, a very interesting discussion. And I, 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 I listened very well to uh, Martelli, and I was thinking about the generation of gap, you know, and uh, uh, based on what he has said, it will see me as though that is of our own making. Um, if those characteristics are there, where we allow for open dialogue, um, where we have a sense that some of our older folk may not be fully aware of all the things that we do now. He mentioned the internet as being one of those elements, you know, the cell phone, um, that is so removed from the rotary phone <laughs> of, of many of many eons ago, <laughs> right? Um, uh, there, there has to be a sense of of, of, of understanding that we don't all speak the same language, you know, and to create the, the, the opportunity, the environment mm -hmm. where persons can feed in and share their thoughts, share their concerns, and, and also learn from each other as well, mm -hmm. um, so that we can maintain useful dialogue. And in that case, then that issue of generational gap will obviously become uh, will obviously shrink in, 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 in a sense. Mm -hmm. And of course that also has lots of other components attached to it, Reverend Farley, mm -hmm. uh, the belief systems, yeah. mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we began to talk about it a little bit earlier, um, the whole issue of our, of, our, of our parents telling us things like, you know, um, stay from for agriculture, mm -hmm. you know, I want the whole not a fork for you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the sea has no back door. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so it became right from the sea. Mm -hmm. That was the, 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 the tremendous economic power mm -hmm. that resides on, on the water. You yeah, know? There you so, go. Yeah. so so I, I think that, that we need to really begin to look at how we can engage. Change that kind of thinking. And change that sort of thing. Because mm -hmm. legacy can be shaped. Yes. 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 Legacy can definitely be yes. shaped. Yes. yes. What, what's your take on that, um, Brandy? Yeah, I mean, so think. Go ahead. Yeah, the whole idea of the whole idea of um, occupation. Uh, we focus just now on the our historical say, yeah. historical context. Yeah. So the whole idea of occupation. So when I was growing up, <coughs> you know, I had, and I I can't necessarily attribute this to my mother or whoever. I'm a product <laughs> of society, but my my idea was. You either be a doctor, a lawyer, or a politician, because mm -hmm. those are the only three people I saw who seemed to have money, who seemed to have anything else, right? <laughs> that was my context. My mother was very Not agricultural. Not a teacher, a policeman. Uh, yeah. well, I could have been a teacher, because I was actually recruited to be a teacher yeah. before I left Barbados. It's not as glamorous. And I was recruited to be in the Defense Force, actually. And okay. if you think about it, at that time, there was a lot of opportunity in the Defense Force, yeah. right? Because uh, they were still building the Defense Force right. when we got out of high school, right? right? But 
I never thought about agriculture and that kind of stuff, you know, but if you think about it, when our grandparents and parents said, you know, I don't want to see a hoe in your hand and that kind of stuff, they were thinking about it from the context of slavery and mm -hmm. post slavery mm -hmm. and yes. being uh, sharecroppers and working mm -hmm. the land mm -hmm. and physically there. They, I don't think they were thinking of it in terms of you could actually own the land. Mm -hmm. There you Not go. Not just work the land. There you go. But you could own the land. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Second mm -hmm. thing, how do you do it differently? I don't think they even perceive the fact that today there are farmers out there who own land and who have computers that decide when to turn on the water and when to shut off the water, mm -hmm. when to harvest and when not to harvest, right? I've seen things where, where growers now have these heat maps and instead of just watering the whole field, mm -hmm. it only shows them where the water is below it's a certain needed. amount and that's yeah. what comes on. <laughs> When they come to harvest it, the field is mapped out, mm -hmm. right? And the harvester is out there and the, the, it's empty and the farmer's got an iPad watching the tractor go and harvest, mm -hmm. you know, tons. In one day, they can do more work than all of those plantation workers did mm -hmm. in a week. Mm -hmm. yes. That's a completely different view yeah. of agriculture than yes. our grandparents yes. had yes. and our great-grandparents mm -hmm. had, right? Mm -hmm. So they were telling us within the context of what they understood. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why today it's so important as we build generational and this multi-generational is to mm -hmm. understand that sometimes when the young people are talking about something, mm -hmm. they're talking about it in, with a vision that mm -hmm. is sometimes beyond. So it gives them a hearing. What you can hear. Yeah. Give yeah. them a hearing. Trust them, you know, mm -hmm. when they say, mm -hmm. I want to start my own business mm -hmm. for us and for our grandparents and stuff. Starting your own yeah. business was just mm -hmm. this, this really tough thing. Mm -hmm. But now I tell young people all the time, you can be anything you want to be. And here's the thing, in this 21st century, if it doesn't exist, you can create it. <laughs> it's true. Did you ever get taught that you can create your <laughs> own world? No, that, that, that was not a part of, yeah. Our, yeah. of our system. We, we, we were, we were uh, in some ways, indoctrinated to believe that we have to basically work with what is there. Right. You know, um, you leave school and you find a job that is there. Yes. You know, um, so the whole idea now of of being an entrepreneur, you yes. know, um, though not entirely new because we know that there were other. There were entrepreneurs, you know, before. selling in the market, right. harvesting yeah. fruit. Oh, oh, they were oh, entrepreneurs. Oh, 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 by the way. We didn't call them that. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> the, the hawker. Yeah. <laughs> But, but that the, seemed to have been a, a big stage. farmer. Yeah. That seemed to, be a, to that have been a stage that was there to fuel those yes. who wanted to become doctors and, and, yeah. and, and lawyers and, yes. and stuff, right? Because the hawker and the big farmer had a perception because their children became a doctors and right. lawyers. Even those yeah. early black businesses. It's true. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the, the thought was that our children should become professionals. Professionals, mm -hmm. right. And once they became professionals, they left the family business. Yes. Right. And, and that, is, that is kind of difficult, because to me, we have in bad business, there are some bad businesses, but once the owner has died, mm -hmm. the business dies. He dies as well. Yeah. Yes, right. because they, they didn't build that legacy. The legacy. This, this is important, so you're right? making legacy. But then when you look at other communities, mm -hmm. right? The it's, other it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. They yeah. teach those children to carry on, to carry on, yes. to carry on. Yes. They teach them to be entrepreneur. They yes. teach them to be farmers. They mm -hmm. teach them to own the land. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You talk about by the sea. Mm -hmm. Right. We didn't think about going by the sea and it's and it's too much salt and <laughs> the thing rot your house rot out and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And now you look at the properties close to the coast. It's very expensive. Very expensive, right? Auto reach. <laughs> yeah. And and those people are asking, well, how much is it gonna cost to replace my roof every ten years because mm -hmm. it's gonna rot out, right? Mm -hmm. Because they've been taught you can make enough that when it comes to replace your roof, you, can replace you it. just do it. Yes. So that's not an <laughs> obstacle. Yes. The uh, the obstacle is the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. The yeah. obstacle is the opportunity. Yeah. Sure, the sea ain't got no back door. Yeah. But most stores who come in here, not even going far enough that the back door even matters. You know, Reverend Farley, uh, I think though that, that this whole idea of, of legacy though um, has such significant implications. Um, I mean, not just in terms of generations to come, but I think even now though, being able to talk about it and address these, important. these issues yeah. are, are critical, yeah. you know, uh, and shaping what is to come. Yeah. Because I think that there's some things that have come down to us 
that are no longer relevant. Yes. I mean, I mean, back when they were said to us all, when they were, you know, constrained people's minds, it, mm -hmm. it made sense, you know, yeah. because mm -hmm. that's where they where, where they were, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and some of them think what has happened is we have we have accepted things, lock, stock, and barrel, yeah. mm -hmm. without without this kind of analysis. And I think that mm -hmm. part of our own journey is to come to these points of analysis and to yes. see what makes sense, what doesn't, you know, yes. and how can we, um, you know, make some corrections mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and move forward. For example, look at your business. I think, I think the point that uh, Reverend Marchelli made is so, is, so, is so poignant that business can't be just seen as a generational thing in one generation. Mm -hmm. As we see across the generations, yes. you know, how can we build on our, on our fathers? Um, yes. Um, business. How can we build on, on our mother's business? How can we, mm -hmm. how can we, you know, and how can we you not know, children come along? Can they build on what our, what our grandfather left, you know, our father left, you know? Mm -hmm. So it becomes more yeah. of yeah. a broader scope. Yes. Well, well, the time has <laughs> disappeared already. <laughs> they have two minutes to go. But it's a discussion. You know, viewers, we always say that our sessions are discussion starters. So perhaps you can start a discussion in your church, in your family, the whole idea of legacy. And we, that's what we sought to do here. Get you thinking so that perhaps you can have it yourself. Tell you to sit down as family and bring your different members together and tell us some jokes and have some food and I mean even that the food in terms of what you use now what you used to use then so it's really really important and it is it has spiritual component to it as well all right um um Reverend Martelli that's final words to me also and then you'll have a closing prayer so I give you one quick example and then mm -hmm. one verse my my mother-in-law for a long time had a flip phone mm -hmm. and she didn't want to upgrade <laughs> But then she started having great grandchildren, mm -hmm. and she wanted to see them. Uh, okay. And she saw her sister had an iPad talking to her grandchildren because her daughter worked for Disney. She yeah. was like, What's what is that? this? <laughs> Three months later, my mother-in-law was using the iPad <laughs> because her motivation was, I want to see my grandchildren, yeah. great grandchildren. There you go. There you no, go. More old, no more flip form, <laughs> right? So she learned, she made two generational leaps. Mm -hmm. Because she wanted to see, see that. Indeed, indeed, right? indeed. Mm -hmm. And Psalm one three says, "Blessed is the man who's planted by the water, rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season." I want to encourage you to think about that differently. Mm -hmm. To be planted by rivers of water, understand the water, understand the value of water, understand the value of land. What seed needs to be planted mm -hmm. when, so that you can bring forth fruit in this season. Yeah. And sometimes when we plant, we also got to realize we don't know everything. A, f a good farmer will tell you they're always learning. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. So how can we teach that? agricultural mentality, the farming mentality, whether you choose to be a farmer or choose to be a preacher, a teacher, mm -hmm. a businessman, understand that you got to be planted by water and you got to understand land and culture mm -hmm. and soil and sun mm -hmm. and moon, new moon, half moon, full moon, mm -hmm. so you can bring forth fruit in a season. Yes, beautiful, beautiful thought to end the whole discussion with legacy. Yes. And uh, Reverend Martel, you thank so much. Thank you for having we me. We enjoyed the fun. discussion tremendously. <laughs> May God bless you, thank you. and your ministry. Ever can we close the word and pray for us? Father, we are so delighted, Lord, to be able to have these times of engagement, Lord, in this particular forum. We thank you, Lord, for your wisdom, which has been shared. And I pray, God, that you will grant us all the courage, Lord, uh, to do what is necessary to ensure that we leave a positive legacy. Father, we give you thanks to the bless of a martelli. Continue, O oh God, to feel God with the face of the wheat. And may he grow from strength to strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.